first time I've ever heard you quote the Bible. Oh, we knew Elaine would be a good influence on you. Oh, by the way, I'm going to marry her. What? Oh, Mortimer! <laughs> oh, Mother! Mother, come in here! I have the most wonderful news! Mortimer and Elaine are going to be married! Married? Oh, Mortimer! <laughs> we hoped it would happen just like this! <laughs> Elaine must be the happiest girl in the world. Happy? Just look at her leaping over those gravestones. <laughs> That. What's what, dear? You see that statue there? Why? Why, that's a her and Dina Carnina. No, dear, that's Emma B. Stout ascending to heaven. <laughs> no, no, standing at Mrs. Stout's left ear. That bird, why, why that's a red-crested swallow. I, I've only seen one of them before in my life. I don't know how you can be thinking about a bird at a time like this, but with Elaine and the engagement and everything. It's a vanishing species. Thoreau is very fond of them. Oh, by the way, I left a large envelope around here last week. It was one of my chapters on Thoreau. But have you seen it? Well, if you left it here, it must be here somewhere. Oh, when are you going to be married? Oh, what are your plans? Oh, there must be something more you can tell us about Elaine. Elaine. Oh, yes. Elaine thought it was brilliant. What was, dear? My chapter on Thoreau. <laughs> Well, when Elaine comes back, I think we ought to have a little celebration. We must drink to your happiness. Martha, do we still have some of that in Baltimore paper? Oh, yes! And I'll open a bottle of wine. Oh, to think it happened in this room. Now, where could I have put that? Well, with your fiancé sitting beside you tonight, I do hope the play will be something you can enjoy for once. Perhaps it'll be something romantic. What's the name of it? Uh, Murder Will Out. Oh, dear. When the curtain goes up, the first thing you'll see is a dead body. Shocking news for you. Now, now we've all got to try to keep our heads, you know. We've sort of humored Teddy because we thought he was harmless. <laughs> he is harmless, dear. He was harmless. That's why he's got to go to Happy Dale, why? He has to be confined. Mortimer, why have you suddenly turned against Teddy? Your own brother. You've got to know sometime. It, it might as well be now. Teddy's... Teddy's killed a man! <laughs> Nonsense, dear. Uh, there's, there's a body in the window seat. Yes, dear, we know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Of course, dear. But it has nothing to do with Teddy. Now, Mortimer, just forget about it. Forget you ever saw the gentleman. <laughs> forget? I never dreamed you'd peek. But who is he? <laughs> His name is Hoskins. Adam Hoskins. That's all I really know about him. Except that he's a Methodist. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's all you know about him. But what is he doing here? What happened to him? Oh, he died. <laughs> Aunt Martha, men just don't go into window seats. 
and die. No, dear, he died first. Well, how? <laughs> Mortimer, don't be so inquisitive. The gentleman died because he drank some wine with poison in it. How did the poison get into the wine? Well, we put the poison in the wine because it's less noticeable. When it's in tea, it has a distinct odor. <laughs> you put the poison in the wine? Yes, and I put Mr. Hoskins in the window seat because Dr. Harper was coming. So, so you knew what you had done? You did not want Dr. Harper to see the body? Well, not at tea. It wouldn't have been very nice. <laughs> now, Morton, you know the whole thing. Just forget about it. I do think not, and I have the right to our own little secrets. <laughs> Don't you tell Elaine. <laughs> <laughs> Abby, while I was out, I saw Mrs. Schultz. She's much better, but she would like us to take Junior to the movies again. Oh, well, we must do that tomorrow, or the next day. <laughs> yes, but this time, we'll go where we want to go. I'm not going to let Junior drag me into another one of those scary pictures. No. City Dusk! Hello, Al. Uh, do you know who this is? Yeah, th that's right. Uh, say, Al, when I left the office this morning, uh, did I tell you where I was going? Yeah, well, where was that? Uh-huh. Well, well, it would take me about a half an hour to get to Brooklyn. Uh, uh, what time have you got? That's right. I must be here. <laughs> Aunt Abby! Aunt Martha, come in here! Oh, oh, what are we going to do? Well, what are we going to do? What are we going to do about what, dear? There's a body in there! Yes, Mr. Hoskins! Oh, oh good heavens! I can't, I can't turn you over to the police! Oh, what am I going to do? Well, for one thing, dear, stop being so excited. And for pity's sake, stop worrying. We told you, forget the whole thing. Forget! My dear Aunt Abby! Can't I make you realize that something has to be done? Now, Mortimer, you behave yourself. You're too old to be flying off the handle like this. But, but Mr. Hotchkiss! Hoskins, dear. Oh, well, whatever his name is, we, we can't just leave him in there. Oh, we don't intend to, dear. No, Teddy's down in the cellar, digging the lock. <laughs> you mean you're going to bury Mr. Hotchkiss in the cellar? Oh, yes. That's what we did with all the others. <laughs> you can't bury Mr. Hotchkiss in the... Others. Yes, dear, the other gentleman. <laughs> when you say others, do you mean... Others, as in more than one others? Of course, dear. <laughs> Let me see, there was... Eleven. Mm. Isn't that right? Oh. oh dear, I think this is eleven. No dear, I distinctly remember when Mr. Hoskins first came. Well, this would make an even dozen. Well, you really shouldn't count the first one. Oh, I was counting the first one. So that makes twelve. <laughs> hello? Oh, hello, Al. My, it's good to hear your voice. Well, anyway, they're all down in the cellar. <laughs> Oh no, Al. I'm as sober as a lark. Uh, anyways, Al, I just called you because I was feeling a little Pierandello. Pierand... You would know. Uh, anyways, Al. Uh, I'm glad you called. Uh, you have to get a hold of George right away. Uh, he has to review the play tonight. I can't make it. N no, Al. Y you're wrong. Uh, George has to review the play tonight. Uh, I'll tell you about it tomorrow. Well, well, this is my department and I'm running it. You just get a hold of George. Now, uh, let me see, uh, where was I? Twelve! <laughs> <laughs> yes, dear. Abby thinks we should count the first one, and that makes twelve. Uh, uh, all right, now. Who was the first one? <laughs> Mr. Midgley. He was a Baptist. <laughs> We should count him as ours, because he just died. Martha means without any help from us. You see, Mr. Midgley had come looking for a room. 
It was right after you had moved to New York. Oh, it seemed so wrong to have such a lovely room to go into waste when there were so many people who needed it. Oh, he was such a lonely old man. All his kith and kin were dead and left him so forlorn and unhappy. He felt so sorry for him. <laughs> and then his heart attack came. Uh -oh. He sat dead right in that chair. He looked so peaceful. Do you remember, Martha? And that's when we decided then and there that if we could help any man to that same sort of peace, well, we would. So that man just came in here, just dropped dead, right in this chair. Oh, oh, how awful for you. Oh, no, dear. Why, it was rather like old times. You see, Grandfather used to have a cadaver or two around the house. You see, Teddy had been downstairs digging the Panama. And he thought Mr. Ridley was a yellow fever victim. Oh, and that meant he had to be buried immediately. So we took Mr. Midley down to the Panama and buried him in the log. Now you see, dear, there is no need for you to worry, because we know exactly what's to be done. So that's how all this started. That man just walking in here, just dropping dead. Well, of course, we couldn't count on that happening again. <laughs> so... Well, you remember those jars of poison up in Grandfather's laboratory? All these years? Oh, and you know your Aunt Martha's knack for mixing things up. You've eaten enough of her piccalilli. <laughs> <laughs> well, dear, for one gallon of elderberry wine, I take one teaspoon of arsenic, one half teaspoon of strychnine, and just a pinch of cyanide. <laughs> Should have been quite a kick. <laughs> yes. In fact, one gentleman had found just enough time to say, how delicious. Well, I better get things started in the kitchen. Oh, I do wish you could stay for dinner. I'm trying out a new recipe. Oh. <laughs> I couldn't eat a thing. I'll come help you in a minute, dear. Well, I certainly feel much better. Oh, you still have to wait for Elaine, don't you? You must be so happy. Well, I'll just leave you alone with your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs>